Happy, happy Wednesday, Motivation Movers. Welcome aboard to an all new daily affirmation. Happy, happy Wednesday. Today is August the 28th, 2019. Wow, it's already the end of August. I swear it felt like I just did my last motivation movement like a week or two ago, and it's already the end of August. I swear like three weeks have passed and it don't feel like it. So this is like, it's scary stuff when the weeks and the days zoom by so fast you blink your eyes and it's a whole nother month. Man, I'm telling you. So yes, uh, happy, happy Wednesday, welcome aboard. Now, if you are on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to both of our channels where you can see the one and only Motivation Movement and Daily Affirmation. We upload on Official Coco Renee, of course, which is my channel, and now we've taken it back to the original channel, Midnight Bosses, our original hub, our, our mother-father channel, okay? I say mother-father because it's not just the mother station, it's the mother and the father, okay? So official Coco Renee is like the baby, okay? So that's that's the, the main hub. That's where you wanna go for all your entertainment needs. We talk about it all. We have all kind of goodies on the entertainment channel. So definitely check us out at Midnight Bosses, okay? Now, if you're on Instagram, we have a official Coco Renee Instagram channel that is strictly dedicated to nothing but motiva motivation movements, daily affirmations. So y'all could just check out all the different uploads and stuff. You're not gonna see the full video in its full entirety when you go on to Instagram, because it's limited. So if you wanna see the full video, you don't wanna miss anything, check us out here on YouTube. But if you just want a quick little you know, refresher, you gotta keep it pushing, but you wanna get a little something, Instagram is gonna be your, your place, you know? Get in, get out, get the point, get the word, keep it pushing, you know what I mean? So we try to make it, make it happen for everybody. If you're on Facebook, and maybe Facebook is more of your thing, Coco Renee, there's no official in front of it, just Coco Renee. You can check me out at Coco Renee on Facebook and I have uploads there too. So I have every platform except for Twitter. I'm not a Twitter person. I have no interest in Twitter. I actually have a Twitter page, but I don't upload nothing on Twitter. So we'll leave that out. Now, if you are a music lover like I am, you love all genres of music um, and predominantly, you know, for like R&B, hip hop, old school, new school, all that good stuff. You love the good old fashioned elements of black radio, having an amazing husband, wife, black power couple on the radio. Check us out, okay? Because we are super dope. Our show is super dope. Our network is super dope. Just the station alone. So again, the station is Rise Radio, the global station. It can only be heard and found on the TuneIn app. So definitely download it there. And you guys can check out the Midday Boss Show, which will only air on Saturdays, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific. If you're on the East Coast, that's three to four your time, okay? So again, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific, three to four on Saturdays, Midday Boss Show. All right, so now that we um, have gotten that out the way, oh, one more thing, I'm sorry, y'all, one more thing and then I'm done. One more thing, I have officially started a new podcast. I have a new uh, co-host, The Real King Covenant. Awesome, awesome dude. Amazing insight, wisdom, conscious mind. We speak about all black issues, anything dealing with black issues. So it's the community, the politics, media, entertainment, whatever's going on, we talk about it, we lay it out on the table, we dissect it, and there's no filters. It is totally uncensored, no filters. So if you are looking for a show that has those elements, you wanna hear about things that you could relate to as far as black excellence goes and just knowing what's going on in our communities and our perspective and like just getting some feedback and keeping it real, check us out. The fourth quarter talk, you guys can catch us on the Midnight Bosses channel. And uh, that's it. That's all I got for you, I promise, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get into the book of Matthew. It's going to be chapter seven, verse 12. Keep it very short and sweet with this one, and then we're gonna elaborate on this, okay? So with the book of Matthew seven twelve, it reads, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. I'm going to read it again because I know it's short and sweet. So most people are going to be like, I don't get it. So let me help you understand. So in everything you do, do to others what you would have them do to you. Period. This sums up the law of the prophets. This is the prophecy law. 
So what the prophets went by in those times, and this is a New Testament, so this still applies today, is like they say, treat people the way you want to be treated. What I notice in this world that we live in with a lot of evil spirits roaming around, so to speak, we have a lot of people who are good hearted, spirited people who are losing their faith. And this is what the, the devil wants to be done. He is, he's, he's working hard, okay? He's working hard. He's doing like triple overtime, triple, quadruple overtime to bring down as many people as he can. Even the good spirited people that have always had good hearts went out of their way to do good to others. And then what I hear people that have those good hearts now say, you know, I try to be good and I try to be a, you know, good, positive person and do the right thing and I still get crapped on. I still, you know, this, this, and this happens. So what's the point of being good when, when you're trying to be good and it's not good enough? You know, this world is nothing but evil people. I might as well be evil. This is what I hear. I actually have clients in the lighting business that I talk to and this is how they feel sometimes, you know, when I talk to customers and they're like, you know, I used to be such a happy person and a people person and I always wanted to go out of my way for others and then I realized you know the world we live in it's like when you try to be honest and you try to live righteous and you try to do you know positive things to others and then you kind of get crapped on and so people forget that when you do onto others as you would want them to do to you God is you know God is the only one that is going to judge you based on these laws not your next door neighbor, not your homie up the street, around the corner, not your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, your mama, your daddy, whoever, you know, um, those people will judge you, but their judge has, their judgment has no relevance. Not when it comes to God, it has no relevance whatsoever. It's obsolete. Their judgment doesn't count. It only counts if you allow it to count. But when it comes to God, he sees all things and he knows all things. And he tells us many times in the Bible and scriptures, I could pull some scriptures out right now and tell you guys that uh, God has made it very clear that he's the one that rewards and he's the one that is pleased when we do righteous things to each other. Um, what I also have taken notice is that it's okay for me to treat you like crap. It's okay for me to talk to you disrespectfully as a person, but it's not okay for you to do it to me. But it's okay for me to do it to you. This is the mentality that a lot of people have these days. We see it a lot with the police. We see it a lot with governmental officials. We see it a lot with you know our community leaders. We see it with celebrities. We see it with people of privilege. We see it with people who are in a powerful position. And we see it with even people who are not in a powerful position, but because their skin tone and their complexion is a little different and maybe they have a little bit more leverage, so they think. Um, they can talk to people and do unto people as they choose with the expectation that there is no repercussion and that you can't treat them the same way. And we see a lot of this every single day in the media. We see a lot of this every single day, you know, in real life. Sometimes we live next to it. Sometimes we go to work with it. Sometimes we, you know, are minding our own business and it just comes to our front doorstep. Um, I'm gonna give you guys an example. And then I'm gonna leave it here because I don't wanna get too deep in this conversation because then it turns into something else, okay? But just to sum it up, I had to bring that to, to the forefront because I see so much of this attitude going on. It's crazy and it's like getting worse and worse. And now we have good people that are like, I can't take it no more. I'm tired of being good and being nice because it gets me nowhere. I get you know, taken advantage of. Good people out there, good servants of the Lord, do not give up. Do not fret, fret, sorry, I said fret. Do not fret, um, do not be weary, as God will tell you. Do not give up and do not turn your back on the better of good because you are still doing something that is pleasing to God. I know that it is hard, I know it's hard because people are just not nice these days and it makes you wanna be not nice sometimes, but we can't let them steal the joy that we have. We can't let them change our character either. Can't let somebody take you out of your position of who you are. And remember, we've talked about this many times before on other um, movements. So bottom line is stay in character at all times. Just know that God is walking with you on that walk. 
And I'm gonna give you an example of people that feel like they're in a privileged position, they can do what they wanna do. Fourth of July, we are sitting outside in front of our home. By this time it's evening, we're not doing firecrackers, we're just watching the firecrackers in the neighborhood. And it was getting a little later, so my kids were kinda like, okay, we're tired, we're over it. So they went to bed early. It's just me and my husband outside, just sitting in our picnic chairs, literally in front of our garage, minding our own business, not a firework in sight. So to sew it up, we see the HOA, they have a parking, you know, security people that come around, they check, make sure everything is good in the neighborhood and all that good stuff, right? And so they're roaming around and they get past our house. And then as soon as they see some good old colorful folks stand, sitting outside, minding our business, it's not a group of people, it's just me and my husband. And it's very, very quiet and, you know, nothing going on. And what do they do? They back their vehicle up, get out and walk over. So what do I do? Let me greet you because you're not gonna walk over to my personal space and, you know, compromise my energy. So I got out my seat and I went to go greet the gentleman. And I said, hi, how can I help you? Is there something I can help you with? And so he looked at me with astonishment that I spoke good English and proper English, okay? And so it seemed like his whole entire what he was coming over there to say has started changing up because he realized he wasn't talking to just like some ordinary folks. He was talking to some folks that actually sound like they educated. And so he misjudged us. And he said, oh, my supervisor told me to stop by over here because there was a complaint that there were sparklers, not firecrackers, not whatever they have, you know, all these different firecrackers that go up in the sky and kaboom and make all this loud noise, but he said sparklers. And there's not, no sparklers in sight, not a sparkle, not a twinkle, not even a child outside. So just the fact that he stopped and said that, and I said, oh, they must be mistaken because we don't have any sparklers. We don't even have firecrackers. I said, so it's not us. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I know it's the 4th of July. It's not a big deal. You know, I just came over here because my supervisor told me to. And I'm thinking, no, he didn't. You came over here to use your privilege. You drove past and you literally was about to pass our home if you didn't see us standing, sitting outside, minding our business. You thought you were going to come up and start something and thought you was going to have some aggressive people so that you have a reason to try to pick an argument or a fight. But when you notice that we were professional and we were calm and collective and we weren't letting you come over and mess up our, our mood, you change your tone real quick. Let me tell you, five, 10 minutes later, our neighbors came home late. They let their kids go outside and their kids was out there with sparklers. And that same security guard came back around. And do you know my neighbors who are not of black descent, okay? much lighter in complexion than us, do you know that he didn't even stop for them when he seen them out there with sparklers? Hmm. And this is what I'm talking about when, I, when it comes to people not treating you as equal or putting you down when they feel that they have a leverage or they have a privilege or an entitlement. But you know, I use my godly, you know, intuition, and I let the the spirit lead me. I could have cussed that man out. I could have been rude and treated him in a disrespectful way, but it wasn't going to get me nowhere. So, I just said, you know what? I'm going to treat this situation as if I would want to be treated. I'm going to show him how professionalism is. I'm going to show him the opposite, because he's expecting me to have a overreaction so that he can have a reason, and I'm not going to give it to him today. So with that being said, do on to others as you will want them to do on to you. At the end of the day, God has a final say and he's going to be the one to bring it all around to the forefront. So we're not going to fret and we're not going to trip off of these folks out here. We're going to continue to do what we do and that is to serve him. Anyways, I got to go. I love y'all. I'm running up on time and I don't want to go over my mark, but I love y'all. I hope y'all have a blessed, beautiful rest of your evening and until next time, my movers. Toodles.